Correct. That's her brother that uh, she and her brother started this firm and they handle many She's of on the, the real the, estate on, uh, in the blue. She's on the right. On, on the right. That's uh, Angie Bradley Morrow. And mm -hmm. I said, Bradley, uh, y'all have any relationship to the Bradleys and Opelousas? And she started laughing. She says, well, that's where originally we're from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, what about Mary Bradley Wartell? She said, that's my sister. I said, really? How about Johnny Bradley, who's deceased now, mm -hmm. uh, Verbal's wife, uh, husband. husband. John Ed uh, Bradley's John, dad. And John the Ed coach. Bra the coach. She says, yeah, that's, that's another one of my brothers. I think there were like 10 children in the family. Right. And at some point, the, the, the family, some of the family moved up to Lafayette. Right. And I think that's where uh, Angie graduated from college. And, and then the other young lady. Then the other young lady, when somewhere is in the conversation, Angie says, you Bobby Dupre on the show? The TV show? I said, yes. She said, well, don't leave. She says, we have a young lady here that never misses your program. Mm -hmm. She brings her out. She's Angel good old mm -hmm. McDonald. Wow, I have seen McDougal, her in years. I'm sorry. And of course, Morgan Goodall, right. my longtime friend, well, he's still my friend, but district attorney here helped me a lot when I was in the bail bond business, mm -hmm. uh, helping me get the guys in and out of the, of the courtroom. And uh, anyhow, uh, Angel, uh, thank you so much for being so sweet and y'all allowing me to tell this little story. And uh, and speaking of that end of the parish, because I know the, the parents are both from around the Melville area, that's uh, Chef Paul Prudhomme's... Uh yeah, and that's why I need that new camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I mean, cell phone. Hard so, to pick up. Yeah, that, that's correct. That's Paul Prudhomme. Uh, it's a beautiful facility. Right near Great, Palmetto. Yeah, right, right outside of Palmetto. Uh, he had a fire in the old location, and I'm not sure, but it looks like the old location is being used again for Maybe. a portion of it. It was all clean, clean around, all the grass cut real nice, and it looks like there might be some activities there. So uh, I, that was on my motorcycle ride. That and brings me up to, to the point of uh, when we had the big fundraiser squirrel uh, uh -huh. cook-off last Saturday. Uh, I had uh, mentioned that Welcome I Welcome back, KSLU, by the way. I was going to be riding that motorcycle, mm -hmm. and I cleaned it up and got on it, and I rode over to the squirrel hunt, and it's a good thing I didn't go in a car because uh, Jonathan had offered to park me, but I don't know where he would have parked me. They, it was packed. I've never seen so many people at that, e at that event or any event at Willie's, and they draw good crowds all the time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, they were able to raise a, a substantial mm -hmm. amount of money. Got on my bike. And it, it was in benefit of one, one of the Sebastians, one, one of the uh, sisters that, yeah, that's that, had some yeah, disease Jerry, issues. Uh, Sebastian that she studied. Uh, I, I guess you call Bougereau. it a wildlife and biology type thing. So she's been involved with hunting. So It, 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 it had a huge, beautiful crowd. Oh, then I got on my bike and went to... Uh, LeBeau, uh -huh. stopped at Stella's, visited mm -hmm. with Mike. I asked him how his wife, Karen, mm -hmm. uh, you remember with the, in the Jim Doherty campaign, very Karen active. really mm -hmm. was active and very... Helped us a bunch. Yeah, and good ideas about mm -hmm. campaigning. She, she, yep. She's on top of the situation. He said she's doing well. Then I went to Palmetto, and that's when I took the picture of the... Uh, of, of, of the plant. Of the plant. Then I went up into Melville, rode around Melville, then went to Crotch Springs, then came on back... I had been invited. Billy Jarrell was at the Sebastian uh, fundraiser at Squirrel Cook-Off and uh, invited me for barbecue. And it was, uh, and I guess you could say, a, a, maybe a fundraiser. I gave uh, Bill Fontenot a little check. Uh, but it was for Bill Fontenot. Right. And uh, Ivan Ray had cooked the, the barbecue and did a great job. Uh, saw a lot of friends and uh, couldn't stay too long. I had to get on home and watch the LSU game. They did okay, I think. They did all right. They, they top some, of the some people said they weren't that satisfied. You know, thir only 31 points. I figure if we only win by 31 points from here on out, I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay gonna, with I'm gonna get jump up and down, but 31 <laughs> points is not bad. Huh? No, it's not bad. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the opposition played a very good defensive game the first quarter and most of the second quarter. Then that's when the depth of the LSU Tigers come in. Mm -hmm. They keep revolving do, those players. I'm gonna lean on you during the show. And then I'm gonna wear you down. That way, as the show goes on, I'll better take over more and more. You see, I'm aware. That's what they did. That's them. what just they lean do. on them, wear on, on them, push yeah. on them, and and then while we're talking about sports, what about our coach, 
Yeah, with Sean the Payton. Saints. Man, he bragged that he played college, he played pro ball, had never had to have a stitch or nothing. He, he always bragged ball. about it. Yeah, he played some pro what? ball. He's a backup quarterback. Too yeah. small, huh? No quarterback. Yeah, he was a short little guy. <laughs> no, okay. no, yeah. Oh yeah, well, Drew Brees is not a big guy no, either. No, six foot. That's, that's right. right. So uh, he got hit when the the play went to the sideline. They broke it, broke a bone in his leg and tore up his MCL. So they had to have three hours worth of surgery this week <laughs> as a coach. Man, he's like a uh, um, uh, oh. Uh, Joe uh, Joe Pa Joe Paterno over at uh, at Penn State. You know he his yeah. leg problem. That's what it comes from too. Is a player hitting him in the leg. So how you like that? Uh, let, let's, another, let, let's hit another sponsor before you okay. go too far because you're yeah. talking about the squirrel cook off. How about Kerry Thibodeau, Doctor Kerry Thibodeau, who of course organizes the St. Hubert's Day uh, cook off each year. It's 12 years I think they've done it now. Great job, how much he gives back to the community. But if you need a surgeon, he can handle your general surgery, your vascular surgery. He's been around here over 20 years, board certified. He can do wound care from the uh, hyperbaric treatments to the skin grafting and all that type of work as well. The uh, varicose veins type work. He's done gallbladders, breast biopsy, uh, biopsies, appendectomies, colonoscopies. Whatever you need, Dr. Kerry Thibodeau can take care of you over in the Opposites General Health System. And how about one more while I'm hitting sponsors? Let's go to Washington State Bank. While we're in Washington going over there to the Squirrel Cook-Off, we can talk about Miss Sue Brignac and all the lovely people over at Washington State Bank who do all the banking you need. You're looking for home loans, looking for commercial loans. They got fresh, fresh, brand new money sitting in the vault ready for you. They got 24 by 7 Uh, checking and and savings account. If you want to do all your banking online, full access to all that, pay your bills online. You can do all that as well and look at those checks and check out the endorsements. There's no need to wait on that that envelope to come in at the end of the month anymore because they've got all those type of services all on your computer for you, nice and convenient for you. If all you got time is at 10 o'clock at night after you knocked off of work, it's there waiting for you. Washington State Bank. Uh, I was having lunch in in, uh, Lafayette Mm -hmm. and a young couple walked in and they started smiling and then it didn't take me long to recognize one of them. And I'm speaking of uh, Tara Timish, who's now married to Paul B. Avenue. Paul from Opelousas. Tara was a stepdaughter of mine. Her mama was Christy, my second wife, Christy Bourgeois Timish. She had married uh, a, a Timish, who's the father of Tara and also of Toby. Mm-hmm. And uh, love those two kids, and uh, they're doing well. Uh, recently, we we spoke, I think, about uh, Toby uh, left Home Furniture and went over to uh, Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance mm-hmm. in the Lafayette Parish area. And uh, Tara works for a, a large company, and according to I saw James Wallace. When I got back from Lafayette, I went over to get my shot at uh, my. Uh, Flu shot, flu shot at DCG, and he came out and, and spoke with me, and I told him who I just met because he went to high school here at Opelousas Catholic with uh, Tara and uh, and Paul. Paul was uh, the manager of the big Home Depot store in Lafayette for years and years. Home Depot, and, Home Furniture. I'm sorry. Home Furniture. Home Furniture. I'll, I'll get it I'm right. On the right page. Uh, yeah, <laughs> keep me on the right page. Uh, he has also left uh, Home Furniture. Uh, it's a hard job on a young family man, or family or open, lady. Open seven days a week, and especially on holidays. And they have holidays those big sales. when everybody else is, mm-hmm. you, you need to be with your children, you need to see some of their sporting events on the weekends. Pretty hard to do. But anyhow, uh, he has joined uh, Edward Jones uh, Financial uh, uh Financial. Excellent. And uh, that in, he's working along with uh, Jeff uh, Gottschall, uh, J- uh, Dr. Jimmy and Kathleen son. Gottschall's son. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's Joe Fred's uh, nephew. nephew. Mm-hmm. And uh, seem, Paul seems to be doing real well. He said he was going to call me. I'm, I'm sure he will. And uh, maybe I can you know, get some ideas and do a little business with him. But two young people, uh, it was so good to see him. And uh, I thought I had a picture. In fact, I know I took a picture with them. It's on the other camera. And it's on the other we'll camera. Next week. We want, next week, hopefully, we'll have that picture to show you. You know, I was talking about voting. Mm-hmm. Ward 1, bring canned goods, bring whatever dry foods you can bring. Ward 1's got the, the boxes set up for the Opelousas Food Bank, and it's all run by the Opelousas Sunrise Rotary. They're going to put the boxes out. Bring your donation when you go vote. Just remember, when you go vote, bring food. And the Opelousas Sunrise Rotary, Joe Hidalgo, Keith Norman, that whole crew, they're going to go out, 
they're going to pick up all that food. And when you vote, I think the last endorsement, the, the last uh, amendment there at the bottom is about a homestead exemption for disabled veterans. They're going to double the exemption. If you're a veteran who was 100% disabled as a veteran, you know, serving your country, if you got disabled as, as a veteran, they're going to double the homestead exemption to try to give those people help I voted if you for vote that. for it. Yep, sure and, did. Uh, Link Savoy, of course, sent us some of the information just to remind us about that. It's a very good thing. I voted for it as well. It's a, it's a good move. There are not a lot of people within the parish that would qualify. I mean, you're talking about a handful of people. But certainly if a man gave his, his capacity to have a livelihood for his country, certainly we can give back to give him a little break on his taxes. That's correct. And uh, we have a minute and a half yeah. left. Uh, on the death side, we briefly mentioned uh, the death of uh, Joe Elder Jr. Mm -hmm. last uh, week. We didn't know any of the details of, you know, the, the funeral and all. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the wake was uh, Friday afternoon and the funeral was uh, Saturday morning. Uh, Vicki and I attended the wake on uh, Friday afternoon, visited with quite a number of the members of the family. And then she brought me over to show me his plant. I had no idea that it was such a huge plant. I mean, I knew he the processed a lot of the milling treated, and all. Yeah, the, the treatment of, of, of these uh, timbers that he treated. And uh, I mentioned to Tina on Tuesday that I had been there. She says, Bobby, he started that in 1976. Joe started that business in 1976 in a little small one room place. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, look at what that man did. She said he was some successful And he came by that honestly because his daddy is famous for being, the, as everybody always said, old man Joe Elder, he was tough. He was tight. And <laughs> I, I got, to, and I got to meet uh, members of his four children and uh, uh, other, his uh, Frankie was there, of course, right. and, and other members of his, Edna was there, jo Joanna was there, uh, his, and uh, I'll have to come back. That happened to me last I caught, week. I caught you at, at the war. I, I do have to tell you, I have something to tell you about who they asked about. We're going to see you folks. He was finished the story on the other side of three.